Well, folks, my name is Chad Perkins, and on behalf of Red Giant, welcome to this first tutorial in this free training series on using trap code form. Form is a widely used and powerful particle system, but you know, form is such a unique animal and completely different from any other particle system. In most other particle systems, particles are born, they have a lifespan, and at the end of that lifespan, they die out. But the particles in form just exist. They never die. And so the features that form has, like you know, controlling form with fractal displacement or with audio or whatever, it creates such original, inspiring results it would be difficult or impossible to create with another tool. Now, I realize that might sound as intimidating as it sounds exciting, but form isn't difficult at all to learn or even master, as we'll see as we go throughout this series. And there's also a way to just jump in without really knowing anything about form. So that's what we're gonna be covering here in this first tutorial. Now let's start with the brand new After Effects project. Nothing else going on here. I'm just going to click and create a new composition. We'll make it 1280 by 720 and uh, 24 frames per second. Duration doesn't matter. I'll say 10 seconds, that's fine. And I'll go ahead and click OK. And you can't just apply form to nothing. You have to apply it to something. So let's go ahead and create a solid. I'm just gonna right click in the timeline panel, choose new, solid, doesn't matter what color it is. I just want to make sure it's comp size uh, and click OK. And now I'm going to go to Effect. And then I would go to RG Trap Code, but I'm actually currently using beta software. So I'm going to go to RG Trap Code Beta and I'm going to choose Form to apply Form. Now your default settings should look something like this, an unimpressive kind of grid of white dots. Depending on the resolution of your composition, this might look smaller or bigger, but something roughly like this is the default settings for form. I realize not super impressive. In the next tutorial, we're gonna look at how to create uh, impressive stuff from scratch, but there are a bunch of presets included with form to help you get started right away, and they're found here in the designer. So I'm just gonna click this large inviting designer button to open up the designer. I'm gonna go ahead and pause this to make editing easier, but you'll notice that now uh, in form, we can play our timelines and have the animation show up here and we'll come back to this momentarily. I'm just gonna pause this for right now. Now we're going to be digging into all of this throughout this tutorial, but essentially just as an overview of this designer interface, we have presets on the left, we have the main components of form along the bottom, and then these are called blocks, by the way. And then if we select one of these blocks, let's say opacity, then we get the controls for that block in the right hand side. There's also the blocks area. If we put our cursor all the way over to the right here, then we get the blocks, which are essentially presets for these various blocks. So if we want to apply a color, I can click the color block and get the controls for that color. Or I can go to the blocks and get presets for those colors and change those things there as desired. So that's the overview of the designer. Let's talk about these presets. Now, you'll notice that when I put my mouse over, we saw some cool presets here, but then as I put my cursor back away, that drawer, if you want to think of it that way, closes back up again. And that's out of uh, convenience for you, and that does actually feel pretty sexy because you can put your mouse over and like, I want this now, and now I don't want it, and now I want this, and now I don't want it. And so the re interface responds to you very dynamically, which is kind of fun. But if you ever did want to keep something open, like presets, then I could come over here to this arrow and click it, and once it faces the opposite way, then it means it's going to stay open. And same thing with the blocks area as well. Now there are two categories here, multiple form presets and single form presets. We'll talk a little bit more about what those are a little bit later on in this movie. I'm just gonna go ahead and close this up though. I'm gonna start on single form presets. These are a little bit more simple than the multiple form presets. Now I'm gonna open up basics right here at the top. We have a bunch of really awesome uh, presets in each one of these categories. Let's say for example, this plasma thing one, this beautiful form shape. And again, I could go ahead and I'm gonna click this little button to go back to the beginning of my timeline. I'll hit the play icon, and now we actually see that animate, which is really cool. I'm gonna go ahead and pause that. Now in form, we also have GPU acceleration. I click this little sprocket icon to get the settings for form, and now we have our preferences here. So I was using CPU acceleration, but now I could also use GPU acceleration. 
And there's two options here. It, the nuts and bolts of it is that direct uh, goes a little bit slower, but a little bit more accurately and streaming goes faster, but isn't always as accurate. So I, I prefer to use streaming when I'm using GPU acceleration because I find that the ways that it's not accurate don't really bother me usually. So I like to use streaming for GPU particle running. Click OK. And now when we play this back, uh, it plays back a little bit faster. Now, I've noticed some glitches in my screen recording software when I have multiple things using the GPU. So I'm going to go ahead and just turn this off um, back to CPU for right now. But I would recommend leaving this set to GPU. I find that it does speed things up a little bit. Now let's go back to some of these presets. This is a great way to get acquainted with form and what form does. These are really beautiful presets like this plasma thing five. Again, we'll hit the play icon so we can see that uh, previewing here. Ah, oh, it's just so beautiful. And let's go down to fractals. There's one called data flow. Um, and as we'll see throughout the series that form is just really great for creating kind of like fantasy user interface elements like this. Very interesting stuff. I'm gonna go down to uh, shape grids here, and there's this one called uh, Chevron Cascade that I'm a big fan of. And you can see here that we're not using just plain old particles, we're using this uh, custom particle that's a, a Chevron. We'll talk about how to do that in a later tutorial as well. I'm just gonna pause this for now. Now, I'm gonna close up my presets area, and let's talk about these blocks. So these now, every time I click a preset, my blocks are taken over with the settings needed to make this preset. And because of the modularity of these uh, of, the, of the designer interface, we can select one of these components and change just that component, which is really cool. So I could click on the size rotation block, for example, and the size right now is set to 49, but I could just click and scrub to the left and take down the size if I want to of these chevrons or take up the size, whatever I want to do here. I have total control. These are also rotated 180 degrees. So I can click on this and take this to zero and take it to zero and they will flip up. Now they're pointing upwards. Now presets are one of the best things about the designer, but it's important to be aware of just how many presets there are. So there are presets for the entire thing, for all of form. There are also presets for each block. So I click on block and I have these different types of presets, but there's also presets that go beyond that. So right now I'm using a custom particle type and I could also click on this choose sprite button to choose a different custom sprite. So I could scroll down and look at all these amazing options. So if I wanted to use arrows here, I could just click on basic arrow, click OK, and now my chevrons are replaced with these basic arrows. So presets, presets, everywhere. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Now let's say I really liked this, this change. I like these tinier arrows pointing upwards more than the chevrons. I don't, but let's just pretend I did. I could come down here to this button right here, which is save single form, and I could save this as a preset if I want to. From then on, at the bottom of my area here, let me close these up so we can see this correctly. But in the bottom, in the custom section, that's where my custom presets would show up. Oh, and you know what? You could also save your own custom block presets if you wanted to. Just go over here into the uh, controls area uh, by the block section and just click this little save preset icon. And then your preset will show up in the blocks area as well. Now, all of this is being created with a single form. Form is basically um, a container of particles, maybe a grid or a sphere or even a 3D object as we'll look at. Um, and that's kind of like the structure or the base form of the particles, often just called the form. And in times past, we were only able to have one form at a time or one base form. But now you could actually have multiple forms at once. And so I'm gonna go into my presets area and click on the multiple form presets. All of these just contain, all the single form presets just contain one form, one base form structure. Multiple form presets use multiple forms and tend to be a bit more complex. There's some great ones in here. I'm going to open up organic. Cygnus JM is really interesting. I'm going to hit play here. And actually, I'm going to keep this open. I'm click this little arrow so this stays open. These don't render as quickly because, again, there are multiple forms happening at once. So there's just a lot of textures here. It looks like it's like some stars. And there's like these kind of strings and glows. Just a lot of really rich stuff 
going on. I'm going to close up organic. I'm going to open up backgrounds. Uh, this is probably my favorite of all of the <laughs> presets. I don't know why. I just love this. It's just so 80s and awesome. Uh, and this is just multiple forms at once, creating these shapes and the squares and the rainbow stuff. I don't, I just, I'm in love with that one. It's so cool. I'm gonna close up backgrounds. I'm gonna open up space. Um, I love this neutrino one. Um, I love space things. This feels like something straight out of 2001. I just, I think it's beautiful. I'm gonna close up space. I'm gonna go to geometry. I love this uh, magic Taurus. And let's take this apart. I'm just gonna double click this to apply it. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and pause the action. You see we have a bunch of particles moving around here. And let's go ahead and dissect these multiple forms. You can see now that we have we have almost like what looks like a layer section here. We have the master form, the base of everything. And then we have additional forms as well. And you see that we almost like kind of have like a stack here where we just had one little block before. We now have the block plus a couple other ones in waiting. So for the active form, we're seeing the blocks and for the other ones, we're seeing kind of like a condensed version of them. So I could take off the visibility of let's say form three and form two. And now I'm just seeing the master form form one. I still have form three selected, but I'm looking at master form. So I can click on master form to see all of the parameters here for the master form. If I want to have a special uh, access to different aspects of the form. I could click this little flyout menu and from here we can duplicate the form. We can solo it and see just that. We can unhide all forms. We could reset this form. We could reset the whole project and we could also save this form preset. If we want to, let's say, add another blank form, we could go up to the forms area here and click this blue plus icon to add a new blank form. And we're now seeing this familiar pattern here that we saw with the default form settings earlier. To get rid of that, I could simply select it and hit the trash can icon and it goes away. Now I'm going to hold the option key and click this eye icon, which turns everything back on. Likewise, if I turn off a layer while holding alt or option, it solos a uh, layer. So let's take this apart. So we have uh, the first form is kind of like these cloudy type colors. The second form is like these kind of um, same colors, but particles. And then the third form is like this, oops, do that. Third form is kind of like this 3D torus shape. And when I say 3D, I actually mean 3D. I can click this camera icon and we get this camera preview and now we have camera tools and I can click around this and we can see this is an actual three dimensional torus of particles. Pretty cool. And um, I could also hit the C key on the keyboard to cycle through the camera tools. So if you're not aware of this keyboard shortcut, um, you're kind of stuck because uh, it's just one single camera icon. So I hit the C and then now I could move this up and down. I could track left and right up and down. And if I hit C again, I get a zoom icon. So I could zoom in or zoom out. So I'm gonna hit C again, get back to the orbit tool, move this around to the side. And again, we'll have a dedicated movie to 3D forms later on in the series. Now, if I wanted to, I could reset all the camera moves by clicking this little reset icon. That's not to be confused with this icon, which will actually uh, reset the whole project. This one just resets the camera angle. By the way, these other settings are also important. You could turn on and off motion blur, depth of field, and you could also turn this off. This is the full render icon. I usually leave this turned on, but if you want to see just uh, the particles in their most simple form, you can turn this off, which uh, gets rid of a lot of effects and makes things render more quickly, but it just kind of gives you one single flat pixel. I'm gonna, again, turn this on. I'll go ahead and turn off the camera settings. Now, you might have noticed that there's kind of like this weird gap here with the plus sign. Well, what happens is when you have a master form and then add extra forms, the forms by default inherit properties from the master. So when you just see a vacant blank space here, it means that this form, form two in this case, is getting this property, color in this case, from the master form. So the master form has this blue, orange, light blue gradient. And because form two and form three have nothing there, we know that these colors or these forms are getting its color 
from the original master form, but we can change that. Let me go ahead and turn back on all these other forms. I have form three selected, that's the Taurus. And I'm gonna go ahead and click the plus icon to add a new color to just form three. That's the Taurus, the 3D shape. I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, oh, in the block section, I'm gonna click on peach tree. And now you can see that we have a more warm toned Taurus and yet the master form color is still intact. And also form two, the extra particles, it's still using the, or inheriting, we could say, the color from the master form. But form three is allowed to be its own creature and have its own color swatch. Now, again, we could also change this if we want to. We can temporarily turn this off to see what it looks like with inherited color. Turn that back on again. And I could also delete this to get back to the original color as well. So again, total flexibility. And you don't have to be a master of form to get in here and really do some amazing creative stuff. And at this point, all you have to do is click this apply button at the bottom right corner of the designer, and your design is sent to the main workspace in After Effects. And from here, you can continue to edit your design using similar parameters, such as size, for instance. And if you open up the show forms area, you can access settings for multiple forms from right here in the effect controls panel. Now you'll notice that form three is highlighted here and the parameters down below here have form three or simply F3 in parentheses. That tells us that we're only working on form three. That's the big 3D torus. If I click master form in the show forms area here, then my parameters change to reflect that I'm now adjusting the master form. So now when I change the size, I'm changing the size of the master form. Now, I personally prefer working in the designer, but we don't have to go back to the designer for every little change. Next to each form is a drop-down menu that you can use to do things like solo a form or reset it or delete it. You can also go all three stooges and poke this thing in the eye to hide or unhide forms. You can click add a form to launch the designer and create a new form. And you could also click the all forms button to display the controls for all the forms at once if you want to. The moral of the story here, folks, is that you can work with one form or many forms. You could work with presets or adjust things manually or a combination of both. And you could work in the effect controls panel or in the designer or both. Now, we're just getting warmed up in this training series on this incredible tool. Over the next few tutorials, we're gonna be digging in and learning how to make things from scratch. We'll also learn about the power of curves, formerly called quick maps. And we'll also learn about how to use OBJs to make the fundamental structure of form a 3D object. We'll look at using the powerful auto-animating fractal field to displace the form particles. We'll look at using your own custom particles, like those chevrons we saw earlier. We'll look at lighting form, creating self-shadowing and reflections. We'll also take an in-depth look at using audio to control form particles. You see this? We're gonna build this from scratch and control all of this movement with only audio, no keyframes. Finally, we'll finish up with some recipe type projects to help tie it together all that we've learned. It's going to be an amazing series about an inspiring tool and we're glad you're here. On behalf of Red Giant, I am Chad Perkins. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Shout out to Pond5 for all the super dope music I used in this tutorial.